Good afternoon. Welcome to Midcap Radar. I'm Reema Tenduka. With me is Sonal Bhutra. And these are the top stories that we're tracking this Monday afternoon. Midcap trade flat while IT stocks plunge after analysts reset expectations following Infosys Q4 disappointment. Even capital goods lose ground, but FMCG utilities buck the trend. Mid-cap IT players like Emphasis, Coforge, LTI, Mindtree slide up to 4 to 8% each in line with large peers as the tech pack tumbles after analysts reset expectations following Emphasis quarter four disappointing numbers. Camlin Fine fires up as Infinity Holdings and promoter Ashish Dandekar launch an open offer for as much as 26% stake. A sale of 5.7% equity by Oppenheimer in Z Entertainment weighs on the stock. The offer size is expected to be about 1100 crore rupees. Common slips on a downgrade from Bofa Securities. It has an underperformed call on the stock, believes the risk reward is limited. All right, it is turning out to be a day where we are seeing a lot of pressure on the Nifty and that's courtesy the IT pack, a big pressure that we are seeing around uh, th- around those levels. Mid-cap side of things, they are outperforming the index but absolutely flat as we speak. So Nifty down 166 points right now. Uh, Nifty IT is the one which is the culprit down 5.5%. Uh, we have uh, the mid-cap index which is up 21 points, has been gaining some traction since the start of the trading session. But we'll have to see whether things continue this way or not. For now, a lot of pressure. Uh, it has snapped the nine-day winning streak that we've been talking about. And Bank Nifty too is uh, outperforming but still in the red right now. Uh, Rima, you know, we've always known uh, Infosys to be the one that surprises, yeah. usually on the upside, but this time it's a shocker. It's absolutely come in as a shocker. I don't think anyone on the street an- anticipated that even if the sentiment turns, you know, sour mm. and it goes south, it would have such a business impact in such a short period of time, yeah. right? Decisions would be taken so rapidly to pause projects or even cancel projects because the SVB issue only happened in the month of you know, January or February. So very quickly, the sentiment mm. and the impact on the business was felt and no one anticipated uh, that to take place. But we've been discussing a lot about IT. Midcap IT too has taken a big leg down in today's trade. But right now, let's talk about the other mid-caps and small caps that are moving in trade. Vivek is here at the big wall. Vivek. Well, thank you so much for that. You know, at least in the mid-cap and the small cap space, you know, there's some portion of green. You know, the benchmark indices too are in the green, clearly outperforming the kind of weakness that, you know, the main indices are seeing. Some stocks are outperforming on you know, very good volumes today as well. Precision camshafts, now this particular name, up 13% in the session. Poker and I, you know, has seen a sudden spike in the trading session today, up almost 16%. Ethos is another stock that we are seeing move up on higher volumes as well. And Anupam Rasayan on the back of the order win that it declared on Thursday's trading session, this particular stock continues to see an up move. Um, couple of stocks on the back of very strong volume action, almost two to three times the typical five-day average that we see. Gujarat Ambuja Exports, you know, on the back of very strong export data, this particular stock has continued moving higher for the second straight session on very good volumes today. Penar Industries, strong volumes. Tanla Platforms, as well as BBTC, these are stocks moving up on higher volumes. On the other hand, some of the stocks that are losing in today's trading session, Arcane Chemicals, you know, strong sell flow, you know, coming in this particular name in the first hour of the trading session. Salasar Technologies, InfoEdge, you know, down almost 4% in the session. And 63 Moons, too, falling quite sharply in the trading session today. Glazed, but still mid caps are outperforming right now. So we'll have to see whether that outperformance continues or not. It's a good time to get a technical check on the markets. Rahul Sharma, market strategist, head of research and development at Equity 99 Advisors, is joining us now. Rahul, um, good afternoon. What a Monday it has been, right? Uh, big cues from our own markets. Uh, do you think this is something that will continue considering the weakness and the commentary that we have heard from the IT major emphasis? What impact do you see on the market, so to say? Uh, good afternoon to you and to our viewers. Uh, see, uh, although the recovery which we are seeing today is, is positive, although the dent which uh, IT sector has made may convert index to go sideways in coming session, uh, and also the earning season will keep uh, the market in, in, in major volatility. Uh, for intraday, I think, and I suppose uh, there will be some short covering coming in IT uh, uh, around the closing hour. The immediate support for Nifty will be uh, placed at 17,640 levels, uh, followed by 17,580. And resistance on the upside will be kept at 17,730 and 17,820 levels. And Bank Nifty, which has much more strength, although after the result impact of HDFC, the index looks a little volatile, 
Uh, therefore, for me, Bank Nifty is on watch list with a strong support at 41,820, followed by 41,650 levels. And on the upside, 42,320 and 42,400 will be levels to kept up for the hurdles. Uh, Rahul, afternoon. What about individual stocks? What are you betting on? Yes, definitely. Uh, as you were speaking, that uh, some uh, uh, like uh, stocks from mid cap and small caps are doing really good. Uh, this selection, the first selection is Ranco Cements, uh, which is trading near 760 level. See, the uh, uh, chart structure is really positive and, and about to give a horizontal line breakout on daily charts. After a consolidation of all, almost 10 to 12 days, the stock is ready to show upside moves. The target for Ramco CMS will be placed at 800 with stop loss of 740. And the second selection is from PSU Banking Basket, Bank of Baroda, which is tra trading near 174 levels. I think uh, this is looking really uh, uh, strong on charts, and I'm bullish on this sector as well. Bank of Baroda on technical charts is ready to give a consolidation breakout, and closing above 175 will turn uh, this uh, 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 stock into really positive zone. The target is set at 186 and 190 with stop loss of 169 in Bank of Baroda. Okay, all right. Those are some stocks uh, which are on Rahul's radar today. Thank you so much, Rahul, for joining us and taking us through the technicals of the market as well. By the way, while we are talking about the entire market seeing some weakness in the mid-cap side of things, look at RT Pharma. Uh, this is the demerged arm of RT Industries. Uh, got recently listed on bourses as well. It's up 18% in trade today. And uh, this week itself, we have seen it gaining close... This week, I mean this month itself, we have seen it gain close to 40%. So that's the kind of move we are seeing here. Uh, the other one is IOL Chemicals. So these two names from the Pharma space are doing really well. That stock is up around 10%. And this uh, month so far, again, this one is up 30%. Chemical stocks too doing very well in trade today. The expectation is that lower crude prices could be positive for this sector this time around. Uh, so yes, some uh, some buoyancy is what we are seeing. Anupam Drasan, Meghmini Fineke, all up anywhere between 6 to 9% in trade. We'll do one thing. We'll slip into a short break and connect with Shikhar Agrawal, Joint Managing Director, BLS International Services, to discuss their FI24 outlook and holiday visa trends as well. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Still tuned into Midcap Radar. Let's uh, get you a corporate conversation going now. BLS International Services is on our radar today. China has reopened its borders to international tourists and a strong revival in travel demand is positive for visa processing companies like BLS International. Recently, the company also inked a contract with the Polish embassy in Manila for visa services. To say some questions on what quarter one looks like and the overall demand prospects, Shigar Agarwal, who is the joint managing director at the company, is joining us now. Uh, Shikhar, good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, before I talk to you about this agreement that you have inked with the Polish embassy, tell us how is uh, the summer demand looking like? Because this is a time people go out and travel a lot. Uh, versus pre-COVID levels, uh, what kind of volumes have you seen when it comes to visa processing? And uh, which countries or which geographies are seeing the highest demand? Yes. So as you know, uh, in the third quarter, you know, BLS International, we have done a revenue of 437 crores, which is already a jump of 92% from similar quarter last year. And we did a EBITDA at 66 crores, which was a jump of 150%, uh, you know, compared to similar quarter last year. All this is on the back of just 70% of the application count of 2019. So we are still at 70% of pre-COVID numbers. The reason being certain geographies like Russia and China are still semi-closed. Now, going forward, you know, we have been given mandate to open China fully. As of now, we, you know, within this week, we will be opening all our offices uh, in different parts of China. We're expecting a very healthy summer season, not only from China, but from India, UK, different parts of the world. As you know, the slots are already pre-booked. Uh, you know, there is a big, big demand. You know, consumers want to travel, the hotels, the airlines, everything is full. So we are definitely expecting a growth in numbers from 2019 in certain countries which are fully operational. So definitely, you know, there's a big growth expected. But regarding the new contract with the Poland government that we've recently won, you know, we will, we will be processing around 20,000 applications annually, opening of two centers in Manila and Cebu. This is our first contract with the Poland government. Uh, there are many additional new contracts with the Poland government expected within this and next year. So we're definitely qualified and will be one of the runners for those bigger contracts. The 20,000 applications uh, quarterly or annually, I missed that. This is, this is annually. Okay. Okay. Uh, any other deal wins that you have uh, won in uh, this Jan to April period? 
yes, we have also one Thailand e-visa contract wherein we have to work with the Thailand government in 16 countries to process okay. e-visas for all the foreigners from those 16 countries that go to Thailand. That is another big win for us which we have won in this Jan to March quarter. And that, you know, will definitely lead to a growth in revenue and profitability of the company on, in addition to the uh, new contracts that we won last year from the Germany, Estonian, Philippine government for which revenue has started to come in. Okay. okay. Um, so when we are talking about higher demand as well, uh, Shikhar, can you give us a sense of what has pricing been like? We have seen some fees for some of the visas like US visa going up. Um, other visas also have uh, seen a price hike. Is that <coughs> happening in your processing fee as well? Um, what is the outlook on pricing? Definitely, you know, the new contracts that we have won is at higher price. For example, the German visa contract in US, we are doing at more than 30 euros. Also, you know, in addition to the increase in service charges, we've got an increase in pricing of value added services. Post COVID, the consumer demand has changed. You know, people are opting for more kind of value added services like mobile biometric and courier services. And our revenue per application has definitely gone up. That is why, you know, in spite of being at 70% of the application volume, our revenue was almost double in the last quarter and our EBITDA was 150% up than similar quarter last year. You know, if you talk about the application volume, uh, you know, in the entire last year, we did 10 million applications, including visa counselor and citizen services. In nine months itself, this year, we have crossed more than 12 million. And last quarter numbers are still to come in fully. Uh, so definitely, we will have an increase in volume compared to last year. So when you say, yes, it has come in as, at a higher pricing as well. In quarter three, you did... Uh, it was seen in your results as well. Can you tell us on an average how much has uh, pricing increased by? I think on an average, uh, our, our revenue per application has increased by more than 35 to 40 percent. That has a mix of pricing increase and also consumer di demand increase. So definitely people are opting for more services. So on an average, 10 to 15 percent pricing has increased in value added services. But our revenue per application has gone up by more than 40 percent because of also additional change in consumer demand. Uh, approximately, are you servicing 4 million visas every quarter? Or is the number even inching towards 5 million? So as I have spoken, we have done 12 million applications in this nine months. So that Correct. Could That's be a, a run rate million. of 4 million. But it's only Correct. improving the run rate. So are we, have we hit 5 million quarterly? So I think the last quarter numbers, we have not declared the results. But definitely, I think uh, we will be closing this year more than the last year. And as I've said, we've already been instructed to open our offices fully in China. So definitely, I think this year, we expect the numbers of application to definitely grow up from our existing contracts. And if you add the new contracts that we have recently won, like Poland, Thailand, Germany, Estonia, Philippines, if you add all those numbers, definitely there will be a big jump in number of applications. On top of that, you know, there are big contracts up for renewal, which is, uh, you know, upwards of two, more than $2.5 billion that we have been bidding for. Some of them results have come in, which we have won. And, you know, all these contracts, when they come in, you know, the market share, depending on the market share that we win, definitely there will be a big jump in volumes and revenue and profitability of the company. Okay, so give us a sense of what FY24 will look like. Um, EBITDA percentage last known operating margins were at 15.1%. This is the highest that you've seen in a couple of um, quarters. Quarter two was 15.9%. Is it the run rate that you'll maintain or you'll be able to do better than that because now pricing is seeing an increase. You're seeing some contracts are coming up for renewal as well. See, definitely this is a run rate that we want to maintain and go upwards from there. You know, the new contracts that we are winning in and the new con the new uh, new countries that we are opening up, you know, we are utilizing our existing operations and centers that will definitely leads to economies of scale. So definitely, you know, our revenue, uh, we expect our EBITDA margins to grow in the coming quarters and years, you know, as we win more contracts, as we utilize same offices for more governments. So definitely, you know, our EBITDA margins will grow more. Uh, Shikhar, uh, do you also cater to corporate visas? Uh, and if yes, what percentage of your visa applications would be oriented towards corporate side? So we actually are exclusive outsourcing provider for the government. So all categories of visas, be it Fair business it. visa, corporate or tourist visa, are, are being processed through us. We do not, uh, you know, we do not do any judgment on them or neither we, you know, earmark no, visa. No, fair enough. Visa. Correct. Fair enough. So just wanted to understand how corporate visa travel, uh, corporate travel has picked up based on the visa applications that you are servicing. Is Definitely it back I to pre-COVID level? 
I think from the kind of demand that we're getting for our mobile biometric services, which has mostly opted by the corporates, I can see that, you know, pre-COVID level, we are back at pre-COVID level in terms of corporate travel. In fact, now after COVID, more and more corporates are planning to do different kinds of seminars or reward trips abroad, more kind of conferences. So I feel that corporate travel is fully back globally. Okay, so corporate uh, travel is back. Last question before we let you go. 500 crore rupees cash in the books. Um, anything that is planned, will you be growing in organically or will it be returned to the shareholders in some form? See, we are, we are doing all the steps. You know, we, uh, we just acquired a company called Zero Mass in last year, which was 150 crores. Now, our, because of the profits that we generated this year, our cash is again back to the same level. So we give the highest, uh, you know, uh, yearly dividend, which was recommended by the board. So we are looking at, you know, obviously giving dividend back to the shareholders. Uh, you know, at acquisition, there are certain interesting opportunities, both in the visa counselors and citizen service space that we are looking at. And, you know, on the top of that, these new contracts that we are winning and bidding for, a certain amount of cash will be required for deploying these new offices across the world. Okay, Shikhar, it was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much for joining us and giving us what's, uh, details as to what's happening as far as the world of travel is concerned. BLS International, the stock has recovered a tad bit from the lows, but still lower by 1.5%. We'll do one thing, slip into a short break, and then on the other side, we'll get your special mid-cap spotlight segment. Stay tuned for that. Welcome back. Midcaps are holding up in the green. The midcap index is up close to about 0.1%. A stock which is on our spotlight today is GTPL Hathaway, which reported its Q4 numbers over the weekend. Just in case you missed it, the stock is down nearly 10%. And Surbhi joins in with the details of the number. Surbhi. GDPL Hathaway is in focus today. They have reported their Q4 numbers and it's a very weak set of numbers. Even though their digital cable and the broadband segment revenue has seen a growth on a year-on-year -year basis, which has led to an overall revenue growth of 13%, it's their EBITDA and margins which have taken a big hit. Their EBITDA was down 17% on a year-on-year -year basis and this is because the cost was significantly higher this time around. The channel costs were up 22%, the employee expenses were up 17% and the admin expenses that were up 25% on a year-on-year -year basis. And now this has led to a margin contraction of 500 basis points. The EBITDA margins have come in at 15% versus 20% same time last year. The cable business did see their active subscriber base increasing by 50,000 on a sequential basis, but they're paying subscribers. That saw a reduction of 100,000 subscribers and this was owing to a blackout of three major broadcasters in the month of Feb. The broadband business saw their subscribers increase by 25,000 on a sequential basis and their average revenue per user that has gone up by 5 rupees to 460 rupees in this quarter when you compare it to the previous one. Big slide there. Thank you, Surbi, for joining us. A uh, couple of stocks on my radar as well. The chemical pack is doing well today. So Jubilin Ingrevian, PCBL, uh, that is erstwhile Philip Carbon Black. I'm focusing on those. Uh, Jubilin Ingrevia, where they have commissioned their new acetic anhydride plant, which is at Bharuj in Gujarat. And the total capacity here is uh, 60,000 metric tons, which takes the total capacity for this particular product to 2,10,000 metric tons. The company says this product will help them increase their presence globally. So they are tapping some international national customers as well. This will also strengthen their position in the domestic market to which they're already catering. And this will be done via uh, supplies to newer sectors apart from the ones they were already supplying to. Uh, newer industries like pharmaceuticals, agrochemicals, food, vitamins, uh, electronics, dyes industry are some of the industries that they are focusing on via this product and capacity expansion. PCBL, uh, the stock is in focus because they've incorporated wholly owned subsidiary in the name of PCBL Europe. And the objective of this particular company is to do research and development, manufacturing, marketing and trading of specialty chemicals. Now, remember, the company is into manufacturing of carbon black, which is used in uh, manufacturing of tires. Um, there's another PTI report which has announced that the company has gotten into commercial production of carbon black at their Tamil Nadu plant. Initial phase of manufacturing is around 63,000 tons per annum. The peak rate of production which they expect to achieve in this year itself is 1,47,000 tons per annum and the cost of project is 650 crore rupees. This is the next big trigger for the stock and that's why it's higher in trade today. 
So a whole host of stocks from the mid-cap space which are buzzing around uh, in trade today. Uh, but with that, we'll take your leave on this edition of Mid-Cap Radar. Stay tuned. Your stocks when we return.